About a year after Mac Miller passed away from a drug overdose, an artist by the name of Goldlink made a tribute post to Mac. But it wasn't like any other tribute post, because the entire post came off as extremely disrespectful to Mac Miller and his legacy, especially since Mac wasn't even alive to respond to it. This sent everyone on the internet into a fit of rage that was so devastating to Goldlink's career that he doesn't even release music anymore. But to understand why Goldlink did this and the type of backlash he received, we have to understand a little bit about his relationship with Mac Miller. I also think it's important to understand that you can get a free legendary and two epic heroes along with a free gaming console. You heard me right, I'm talking about a free console. And a bunch of other things like Amazon gift cards with a total value of $10,000 and a lot of other in-game prizes. What game you might ask? Well, Raid Shadow Legends, the sponsor of today's video, are celebrating the arrival of Spring in Teleria with a special Spring Hunt minigame. Basically, what you gotta do is explore the Mistwood and find a bunch of hidden items. Just download Raid with my link below, head to springhunt.plarium.com, enter your Raid ID, and start searching for those hidden items. Once completed, you could win real-life prizes like a free console, Amazon gift cards, and other in-game things. This April, Raid has their first ever Community Weeks which is basically a six week long celebration of the great player base. During this event, there will be many activities and rewards that you can do and get while playing. For example, if you are part of the first ever 14 day login program, you can get legendary champion Chronicler Adolin after seven days. So all you gotta do is log in for seven days between April 11th and July 8th. So if you haven't started playing yet, you're missing out. So make sure to click my link down in the description or scan the QR code to get some nice bonuses that you can only get through my link. Right away, you get a huge starter pack with an epic champion Tayrell, and then after reaching level 25 you get another pack with epic rector draft once you download the game with my link make sure to use the promo code springhunt24 to get silver and more great stuff available to both new and existing players also make sure to join my clan i'll put it on screen it's called maddie balls l youtuber because all the other ones were taken and my friend uh helped me choose the name but make sure to join so we can go crazy on raid shadow legends together now let's get back to the video Goldlink is a rapper who released his first and breakthrough mixtape, The God Complex, in 2014, which was highly rated by outlets like Spin, Pitchfork, Clash, and more. He got into touch with Rick Rubin, who executively produced Goldlink's next mixtape, After That We Didn't Talk. This allowed Goldlink to get a solid amount of buzz, and then he got into contact with Mac Miller. There isn't a ton of information on Mac Miller and Goldlink's relationship, but the most public aspect of it is when Mac Miller brought him on his Good AM tour in 2015, along with artists like Earthgang, Damo Genesis, and more. This tour really helped bring a lot of eyes to Goldlink, and many fans of Mac Miller became fans of Goldlink. One thing that was clear about Mac Miller is he seemed like a really good guy, and it seemed like he wanted to show his fans some really good music that he enjoyed. Many of his relationships were public and friendly, and most fans were aware of how good of a guy Mac Miller seemed to be. Mac even made Goldlink a cake after being on the tour. Pitchfork said, he helped introduce just about every young rapper he came into contact with to a bigger audience, including Goldlink. Miller always seemed to find a way to be in close proximity to the artists he loved, either bigging them up or putting them on. Goldlink even said himself that Mac Miller was one of the first artists to put him on. Without Mac Miller, there would be no Goldlink. He was the first. I'm gonna tell you two things, two things that helped me out. The first that ever even looked my way was Pusha T. The second person was Wale, and the third person was Mac Miller. Okay. It was around this time that Mac Miller began working on his next studio album, The Divine Feminine. Released in 2016, the album was a lot smoother, with less rapping, more singing, and more melodic. He had topics about women and love, which was a bit different from most of his previous material. Mac gave a few reasons as to why he went that route. Like my perspective on love and and um and kind of like uh, adoration towards a female. You know what I mean? Like the the. The, that love story and it's not like there's just no like negativity involved in it there's not like uh like there's pain but there's not like like an angry breakup song or anything like that it's just very like uh sacred towards the female i'm pretty sure he also said one time that he made the album because he saw too many guys at his show and not enough girls but i can't remember the interview so uh let me know in the comments if i'm wrong regardless this album was a huge success debuting at number two on the billboard 200 and having songs like dang go platinum but Goldlink had a problem with this album one that he wouldn't reveal until three years later. In the meantime, Goldlink saw a solid amount of success, releasing his third mixtape, At What Cost. He had features from artists like Steve Lacey, Wale, 
K Trinata, and more. It peaked at 127 on the Billboard 200, which isn't too bad for a smaller artist, and it even went gold. The song Crew from that project featuring Shy Glizzy and Brent Fiaz became a huge hit, and even eventually went seven times platinum. But then something happened that not only changed Gold Link's life, but many people's lives in the hip hop community. On September 7th of 2018, Mac Miller was found dead in his home after a drug overdose. He was known to have struggled with drugs, it's evident in his music, but his death still shook the world. His streams shot up 970%, thousands of fans hosted a vigil at Blue Slide Park in Pittsburgh, and many celebrities offered their condolences. Future, Chance the Rapper, John Mayer, DJ Khaled, Jaden Smith, Shawn Mendes, Victoria Justice, J. Cole, Ariana Grande, and many more people mourned his death online. It was clear what a positive impact Mac Miller had left on people and just how loved he was by everyone in the community. Schoolboy Q, a good friend of his, explained it well in an interview. To this day, I just don't, I don't understand how I can't call my no more, like, an innocent soul, like, losing a friend to game banging is way different from losing a friend that's, like, an innocent little, like, little kid that's just super pure. Like. Everyone was upset about Mac's death including Goldlink. He did an interview with Colors after Mac's passing and shouted him out for being one of the first people to put him on. Mac, Mac was a person who actually believed in me when nobody else did at a time. Like that was around the same time as I did the first Colors. That was 2015. He's like, hey, why don't you come on? That was like my first hip hop look. But there was a jealousy and resentment brewing in Goldlink's heart that led to a career shattering Instagram post that he made in 2019. A year after Mac Miller passed away, Goldlink made a post on Instagram that was sort of an open letter to his old pal Mac. Goldlink said, I'd be lying if I said I was surprised to hear that you died on us. Not because you were necessarily troubled, but because you were special. And because of that, you were troubled. Already, he ruffled some feathers by essentially saying, I expected you to die which is just a really odd comment, but somehow it got worse. I think what made you and I special is that we weren't always on the best terms, so I didn't always have great things to say about you. When we were on the Good AM tour, I played you my album, and after that we didn't talk, and you thought it was absolutely incredible. I released it under the Soul Action label, and the single for my album was called Unique featuring Anderson Pac, and that was your favorite song at the time. I always thought you drove yourself insane about your own music, so much that you would adopt styles as homage to those around you that you loved. That's where our problems started. Divine Feminine was an actual blueprint of and after that we didn't talk. Your single was called Dang featuring Anderson Pac. You had Soul Action support you on the Divine Feminine tour and when I tried to contact you about anything at all, you never hit me. A close mutual friend ended up just hitting my DJ saying, listen man, we love Link, but we just had to do what we had to do. And Max said if he ever needs a verse at any time, he got him. Afterwards, we seen each other at Coachella, and you put your head down like an innocent child. But I told you to pick it up, and I hugged you like the brother you are to me. You were the first person brave enough to openly say he's dope, and gave me a platform. That meant more to me than anything else. Three days before you died, I remember pulling up on you at the crib, walking in the house and seeing the Divine Feminine album plaque on the wall. I was so proud of you and what you created for yourself, and I'm forever grateful for that. This post sent everyone into a frenzy. Understandably so. Goldlink was essentially taking credit for one of Mac Miller's albums, saying he was proud of him as if he was some sort of big brother and huge inspiration, and he straight up accused him of stealing. Not to mention, this was three years after the album came out and one year after Mac Miller passed away, so he couldn't even respond to these allegations. That this post was inspired by pure jealousy, blind rage and hatred for another man and the success that he had, right? Because if Mac Miller hadn't been the name that he was, I don't think Goldlink would have ever been upset that deeply. I don't think he would have been. How much of a narcissist do you have to be to turn someone dying into your moment to prop yourself up as if you are some sort of genius that needed to be stolen from and you in the same post act like you're the bigger man for somewhat forgiving him and, and quote unquote being proud of him as if you helped him reach his, levels of, his level of success. Like Goldlink admitted, Mac Miller opened up his fan base to him, so many of Goldlink's fans were originally fans of Mac. So clearly, even Goldlink's own fan base was going to be very upset about this. Goldlink used a picture from the last day I ever saw Mac Miller, I think from his last photo shoot in life, to kick up some questionable stuff over a year after the kid passed and can't even respond. And I can't even wrap my head around the logic that would tell someone to do this. This dude low-key said Mac copied his style for an album because of a Pac feature, but in the end tried to make it look like he was proud of him. 
weirdo. Goldlink's post was so upsetting that not only fans responded, but it prompted a fellow friend of Mac and collaborator, Anderson Pock, to respond. He said, at Goldlink, I would imagine your weird ass posted up somewhere just like this when you decided to make that disrespectful, narcissistic, jealous, grossly unnecessary post. Why would you do it? I can't even understand it. Since you felt it necessary to bring me up twice, and my boy ain't here to respond, I'ma say it like this. You ain't the first to make an album inspired by a relationship. You ain't the first to make a song featuring Anderson Pac, but you are the first to disrespect my friend who is no longer here for absolutely no reason and I can't stand for that. Anderson Pot continued to say how this really upset him, and that Goldlink wouldn't respond to any of his messages, so he decided to make a public post in response. He continued, If Divine Feminine was such a blueprint of your record, then tell me where the plaques are for whatever your sh** was called. Mac brought your ass on tour and opened up his fan base to you when you had nothing. And this is the type of appreciation you give? You should have just been grateful for the opportunity. Whatever issues you had with Mac should have been addressed in person and ended there. What's the point of bringing this up after his passing and disrespecting his name? Some things simply have nothing to do with you. But when you have a god complex, I'm sure it's easy to think everything comes from you or was inspired in some way. Anderson Pac perfectly explained how everyone else felt about the situation, expressing just how disrespectful and weird it was to make a post like that about a dead man. One fan said, When Anderson Pac goes off on you, you know you're wrong. He's the happiest slash chillest dude ever. Like I said earlier, stealing from friends and fellow artists is something out of Mac Miller's character. And many people were upset Goldlink even suggested this. Vince Staples even said that Mac refused to take royalties from any of their collabs. He didn't want no publish. He said, if you make a million dollars, buy me a, 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 a S-Class Benz or something okay. like that. Publishing said. off the beats he made? Yeah, the whole mm -hmm. project. He gave me ownership of it. That's and dope. He just said, if you, if you make a gang of money, just give me like an S-Class. Wow. And then took me on the road, paid for my room and board, and, just, and, and still paid me. So yeah, you know, that was the homie. Did it. So obviously this accusation upset many fans and friends of Mac Miller. With all of the outrage, Goldlink attempted to respond at a show shortly after. The whole post that I made about Mac Miller was about love and that can actually be brothers. It wasn't about stealing. I never used the word copy. I never used the word steal. The thing is, Mac Miller wrote all of Divine Feminine. That was a great album. However, despite his best efforts, people weren't having it. One fan wrote, Best friends don't give backhanded compliments to dead best friends. TMZ even posted an article saying that he was backtracking. And he was. He knew what he was saying, as did all the fans. And there was no going back from it. About three weeks later, Goldlink made a post on his alternate Instagram account where he said, I remember getting a call that I was culturally canceled after I posted something about a friend that died due to an overdose on his own couch. I laughed. I thought the attempt was quite cute, actually. So not only did Goldlink disrespect the dead, but then he started acting like he was some evil anime antagonist. Anyways, he just continued on to tell a story about how close he was with Mac and how they hung out right before he died. But comments like these did not help and fans made that evident. Even this comment on its own pisses me off. Overdose on his own couch. I don't know why, but that just pisses me off. You're sharing too many details about sh you shouldn't be speaking about. The Goldlink hate train was already full steam ahead. Shortly after the controversy, in January of 2020, he posted a video to Instagram of him performing in Johannesburg with the caption, Cancelled feels nice. After that though, he started canceling shows and slowly fading away from the public eye. On top of that, the pandemic happened, which definitely didn't help his career out at all. Despite only three releases in 2020, one of which was called Best Rapper in the World, he came back with an album called Haram in 2021. After releasing the lead single, he sent some shots at Sheck West to rehash some previous beef and possibly to promote the album. Regardless, people weren't huge on this next project. This MF recording on a drive through speaker. How does he go from at what cost to this? This is what you hear if you get sleep paralysis in the club. Sure, people's disdain from him after the Mac comments may have swayed public opinion but his career was going downhill. Not only that, but he got like zero press for the album release. I was only able to find two super small interviews he did to promote the album, and that was it. It's likely that after his comments about Mac Miller, a beloved figure in the music industry, that Goldlink was blackballed by many people in the industry. The lack of press is evident in how poorly the album performed. It didn't chart, most songs didn't crack a million plays, and I can't even find the first week sales. Which is crazy in comparison to his previous album, which had a lot of great reviews and performed much better. Regardless, after that, Goldlink pretty much fell off the face of the earth. Besides a retweet on his Twitter and a song he featured on in 2023, 
he's been gone. Even his website was shut down. His Instagram comments are turned off, likely from all the hate he was receiving, and it seemed like his career was going to be entirely over. That was until I saw that he featured on the front porch about a month ago, along with a small interview. He's grown a beard and grew out his hair, so maybe he's changing up his style, trying to put the drama behind him and start anew. It's likely that Goldling thought maybe disappearing for a while would have got a lot of the heat off of him, but based on how people still bring up this incident to this day, it's likely that his career will be ruined forever. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you liked, please make sure to leave a like, and if you uh, liked it a lot, maybe subscribe down below. Other than that, this has been Matty Balls, and I'll see you guys next time. I haven't done that outro in a while. I couldn't really think of one, so that's what we got for this one. Again, thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to use my link in the description or scan my QR code to get some pretty nice bonuses.